when, <clears throat> excuse me, when do you recommend people get heart surgery and when can you instead use diet and lifestyle? Are there times when heart disease is too advanced to treat with diet and lifestyle? Yeah, so the pioneers in this field, and always got to give credit to Mr. Nathan Pritikin, to Dr. Dean Ornish, to Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, that bravely, and I mean that, it's difficult, I do that in my clinic, to take a patient with seriously blocked arteries and symptoms and talk to them that they may actually have the opportunity or choice to say to their surgeon or say to their invasive cardiologist, I don't want that procedure. I'm going to follow a path that has you know, 30, 40 years of scientific support, 50 years, publications, insurance approval. It's tough. It's very stressful for patients to try and take a different path. And even if I'm there for them, supporting them, counseling them, giving them the medical data. But never before than now do we have uh, massive support for the idea that the majority of people being told they need bypass or stents don't need it. And that's a very bold statement. And that came, of course, out of some of the experience of Dr. Ornish, Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Joel Furman, all of whom have worked with seriously sick heart patients and seen good results. But there's now mainstream massive data. There was in 2020, a research study published called the Ischemia Study. It was the most expensive cardiology research study ever done. You're really having bad problems with angina pain. You flunked your stress test. You're seriously a heart patient, but you were randomized. You go quickly to bypass or stent, or you get on medicine, a low saturated fat diet, and a fitness program. Completely different paths. You would think for sure stenting and bypass was superior. Nope. Exactly the same outcome at three and a half years exactly the same risk. People die from bypass surgery. People have strokes from bypass surgery. People have infections from bypass surgery and stent procedures, even though I'm a trained and very experienced stent cardiologist. And if the research says you can do as well with fitness, medication, and a low saturated fat diet, let alone they learn about whole food plant-based advantages, why are we having so many people undergo these operations and procedures? And a significant number of them having complications. We just have to redo the whole medical system and stress. Bypass should be the last thing you do, just like bariatric surgery and uh, advanced stenting should similarly be unless you're in a real emergency crisis. Unfortunately, patients don't hear that unless they really seek out. It's not a holistic opinion. It's actually the most uh, appropriate scientific recommendation. So I actually spend a fair amount of my time in my clinic educating, and influencing patients to be strong enough to say to their doctor, I want to hold off. I want to try cardiac rehabilitation, maybe the Pritikin, maybe the Ornish version. I want to watch Forks Over Knives. I want to you know, watch the real uh, Truth About Health conference. I want to get some information. And if I don't do well with it, we can do the invasive procedures later on. What should a man or woman do if a mammogram, MRI, or other diagnostic test finds something in their body that could possibly be uh, malignant? Should they biopsy it? Should they remove it? Should they treat with mainstream protocols? Should they consider alternative protocols? Yeah, I think I'm frankly going to sidestep that question. Um, I'm not an oncologist. I don't treat cancer. I've got enough on my plate teaching people what to put on their plate for cardiovascular disease and general wellness and aging support. Um, it's a very tough issue and I don't want to give, uh, you know, other than a quality answer. So, you know, they all need to eat well and get fitness and get sleep and not smoke and maybe have some advanced labs for nutritional assessment. But um, I do encourage cancer patients to seek somebody out that can help support them from a natural standpoint, even if they're getting radiation and chemotherapy. There are doctors that do it. There are naturopathic doctors, NDs that do it. Some in my community are board certified naturopathic doctors in oncology. So they don't substitute, they don't give chemotherapy, they don't write for radiation therapy. They often work closely with the oncologist, but they're gonna emphasize more the sleep, the stress, the nutrition, the minimization of side effects from therapy. 
Um, there is a specialty that has basically exploded in the last 10 years called cardio oncology, the overlap of heart disease and cancer therapy. Many cancer patients die of heart disease. Could be the treatment, the chemotherapy, the radiation. Could be just, uh, you're very likely to have heart disease if you're a cancer patient you know, in an adult age range. So uh, this is a recognition that if we're looking for really the best long-term approach, we have to broaden our support of supporting the, the circulatory system. You know, men with prostate cancer, they get Lupron, the anti-androgen, anti-testosterone therapy, they raise their risk of dying of heart disease. So we have to watch that. We have to test for it. We have to watch the blood sugar, the cholesterol, the blood pressure, uh, maybe do calcium scans, stress tests, what we need to do. But we don't want to have a victory in the prostate and a uh, statistic in terms of heart. So it's a complex field, but there definitely is a role for nutritional support. What impact does a whole food plant-based diet have on cholesterol and does high cholesterol correlate with heart attacks and deaths? Well, there's no question in the world of epidemiology and statistics that your blood cholesterol does correlate strongly with your risk of heart death. We learned this decades ago, maybe most uh, famously from a research study called the Seven Countries Study uh, that was masterminded by Ansel Keys, PhD, and 17 or 18 other world famous epidemiologists, scientists, cardiologists from Harvard to Italy to Japan. And there was a very strong line, the average blood cholesterol in the community and the rate of dying of heart disease over 10 years, 20 years. They actually followed people up to 50 years in this famous study. There's no question. It can't be argued otherwise. But statistics always allow outliers. You can have a high cholesterol and not have a heart death, and you could have a low cholesterol and have a heart death because there are other factors. Cholesterol is a risk factor. It's not the risk factor. It's one of the risk factors. A low cholesterol in a smoker, you may still have heart disease and even die of it. Um, a whole food plant-based diet scientifically is most likely to lower your cholesterol maximally, particularly if you approach it with the low percentage of fat calories that you're going to have if you're eating fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains without added uh, margarines and oils and um, imitation meats and cheeses, real clean diets. But there is variability. There are people that make a lot of cholesterol independent of their diet. They are called hyper producers and they will be amongst a fairly large group of whole food plant-based eaters that are frustrated. And I get these Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, email, and office visits, you know, every week. Dr. Khan, I live in Vancouver and my cholesterol is 236, but I'm eating a no SOS, no salt, oil, sugar, whole food, plant-based diet. What's up? Well, if you're really doing that and you can certainly uh, engage me from Vancouver with a telehealth visit, we can go through, you know, meal by meal by meal by other factors. You can actually test. And there are people that are just hyper producers and if they have cardiovascular disease, they may need supplements or medication beyond the diet. But certainly the uh, first place award goes to whole food plant-based diets for lowering blood cholesterol. 